Hello, Quincy. Uh, my name is Eileen Fontenot, and I'm one of the librarians at the Thomas Crane Public Library. And today I'm with Wheaton College professor uh, Del Case. He will be speaking at the main library on Tuesday, March 24th at 7 o'clock. And he'll be speaking about the great year in music of 1970. So welcome, Del. Happy to be here. Yeah, good to see you again. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Well, I've lived in Quincy for about 15 years, and I first taught at Eastern Nazarene. Now I teach at Wheaton College down in Norton. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of music work in the city, uh, classical music, but also pop music. I'm really mm -hmm. interested in popular music. I teach and do research on popular music. And uh, I'm really excited to come back mm -hmm. to the library and give one of my talks on pop music. Mm -hmm. um, the topic is great music of 1970 mm -hmm. and there's just an incredible list mm -hmm. of records Crazy that were released yeah. in 1970 uh, and so I'm going to pick five or six songs mm -hmm. from those artists and those mm -hmm. records and sort of go through them and talk about I think musically what makes them so great and why they've stood the test of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah so yeah 1970 has already been 50 years so it's a, a big anniversary mm -hmm. and we're getting into the 70s and in that uh, anniversary and there are a few I, if I could mention a few um, Bridge Over Troubled Water, uh, Simon and Garfunkel, uh, Hey Jude, mm -hmm. um, Led Zeppelin 2, uh, Morrison Hotel, Santana, Chicago 2, uh, Abbey Road, and uh, Will and the Poor Boys uh, with CCR, mm -hmm. and Tom Jones and Johnny Cash. So mm -hmm. those are huge names. Huge names, a great variety as yeah. well. I mean, that Johnny Cash record was uh, number one on the country charts, but number six on the pop charts, wow. which doesn't happen very often. No. Um, it's just, a, you have, again, you have country, you have southern rock, you mm -hmm. have blues rock, you have jazz rock with Chicago, mm -hmm. you have soul, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Jackson 5, you know, also, right. uh, that was their first record, mm -hmm. and then the Beatles, Hey Jude, mm -hmm. uh, that song was released at that point, so it's quite mm -hmm. a variety, and also some of these individual songs in those records mm -hmm. are some of the best loved mm -hmm. songs of the, of the popular music era. Yeah, that's you know. amazing, so, um, so there's a lot of crossover, obviously, so there would probably be a, something a little for everyone who was a fan of rather, you know, the jazzy type or the rock, you know, so it should be exciting. So what can people, um, besides you're going to play the music and everything, mm -hmm. and what else can people expect from your program? Well, I'm not a super fan like a lot mm -hmm. of people, so I always tell people that what that my specialty as a musician is being able to listen to the music and sort of explain sort of what's going on, mm -hmm. and I like to think that it's a way of helping people uh, to experience their favorite songs in new ways. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know as much about the history and the, uh, and the sort of the, the artistic background, the biography mm -hmm. of a lot of mm -hmm. artists. That's what I mean by not being like a super fan. Right. So what I love to do is, is talk about a song, how it sort of works as mm -hmm. a piece of music, and then open up the floor for people to oh, share okay. their memories yeah. or their thoughts or their knowledge about maybe the cultural context oh, okay. of, the, of, the, of, the, of the record, mm -hmm. for example. And I learn a lot from that. Mm -hmm. So. People do not have to have any musical background at all to mm -hmm. come to this kind of event. In mm -hmm. fact, that's my job is sort of to equip people with certain ways of thinking and listening mm -hmm. to music. Mm -hmm. But I always look forward to learning a lot about mm -hmm. about the uh, about the records myself. Yeah. So it seems like it's a, a, a lot of a program for a lay person. You know, Absolutely. it doesn't have to be someone who's like, I know these notes and that and this and everything. So it it'd be interesting to hear maybe also a personal side to Absolutely. these songs. I've heard some great stories yeah. from people who attend these events about, you know, personal connections with the artist or where they were when they first heard oh, the song. Yeah. Really, really compelling stories that yeah. add so much color. Because, you know, with pop music, um, it's not just about the mm -hmm. sounds that come out. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, how they fit into the, the, the time they were released mm -hmm. and how they fit into the individual lives of the, of the fans. Mm -hmm. Um, and how they contributed to mainstream society. And that's not as much how, um, what happened to classical music, mm -hmm. um, where today you don't have to know a thing about Mozart mm -hmm. to appreciate Mozart right. at all. Um, and so uh, I, that's why I like talking about popular music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's it's something that everyone can relate to. Absolutely. Even like younger folks who might have not lived through that period of time, and it'd be interesting for I'm sure for them to hear about you know what went on that time. So yeah, yeah. and you're going to hear these songs on the radio still, mm -hmm. and they're going to be influential on artists mm -hmm. um, working today that are, yeah. that are popular. Yeah, we were talking earlier before the cameras rolled about the art also of of the you know visual arts. Yeah. you know, and these um, records. So. 
Um, kind of a weird question. Do you play the records or do you just have it electronically? You know, I if I, I own some of these mm -hmm. and I might bring a couple uh, yeah. because the album artwork is mm -hmm. really special. Amazing. Um, yeah. But usually I just play it digitally and we oh, can okay. even show show the artwork you know digitally. Mm -hmm. um, right. But uh, it is important when you think of a when you think of a record. I mean, mm -hmm. it was something tangible that you could hold. Right. You know, look at leaf through these big full, full color pictures. Right. It added a lot to the experience. Yeah. So we've seen in recent years the resurgence of vinyl, um, which is very interesting to me. It's kind of a throwback to this era. Um, what What would you think that causes that? I mean, what? Why do people want vinyl suddenly again? Well, I do think that. Um, well, one of the aspects that makes popular music really interesting is mm -hmm. that it has this distinctly nostalgic component. So th material culture or items, uh, uh, swag, you know, mm -hmm. or, or sort of uh, mementos from shows, they have their own sort of cachet, if you will. And um, many people do look up upon the 60s and 70s as a golden era of popular music. And so they, the, the record, the, the actual vinyl record, sort of comes to symbolize uh, a golden era. Uh, so a lot of... Yeah, indie rock bands and others are releasing new new albums on vinyl as well as digitally, and I think they're trying to capture mm -hmm. that sense of that sort of hipster cachet. Mm -hmm. um, I personally think that um, that music sounds better on vinyl, but mm -hmm. generally speaking, I I I get that sense when I hear classical music more because the fidelity is oh. is is higher. Uh, pop music is already so heavily affected and. Mm -hmm. um, and sort of constructed in the studio that uh, the fidelity doesn't matter as much, the sort of the accuracy of the sound. Oh, okay. That's not the point. Oh. Um, you're not really capturing a sound as much as you're creating a sound. So oh. um, I think that it's not, a, the reason why vinyl is back in a sense is, is le that has less to do with how it sounds and more that it, ha it symbolizes mm -hmm. um, sort of a hipness. Mm -hmm. right. you know, that used to exist. Exactly, <laughs> they're trying to yeah. recapture that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's see, anything else you'd like to share with us about the program? That, um well, I just hope that any people mm -hmm. come, uh, you don't, again, you don't have to have any musical right. experience and, um, you know, um, any, uh, and I also hope if people come that mm -hmm. they will feel free to, to share their mm -hmm. thoughts because as mm -hmm. I said, I learn as much right. um, as they hopefully do for me because mm -hmm. I, I wasn't there in 1970 mm -hmm. yet and um, there's a lot of stories behind this music that I love to find out about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very... Very exciting. So thank you for coming. Right. And um, so please uh, join uh, pr music professor Del Case uh, at the main library at 40 Washington Street, 7 o'clock, Tuesday, May 24th, and we'll learn all about the music of 1970. Thank you. Thanks.